Okay, well, I'll tell you about a few of these plants that we use pretty much every single day. This is one that you're probably well aware of. This is called lemongrass, and it's used to clean out the kidneys and also to clean the urinary tract. And it balances out the, the water system in the body, and it keeps the, the water part of the balance flowing, which is very important because <laughs> when we do our healing work here, we use a balance between the elements. The elements are fire, earth, wind, and water. And this is the water element. It helps the water element. Now, what that is for is basically to keep things moving. When you're in times of a lot of change, uh, you can smell that and pass it down. Uh, when you're in times of a lot of change and you're, you're adapting very quickly to new conditions, which is almost every day, <laughs> you have a lot of things to learn, to assimilate, and so on, then if you're balking in those movements, it's because the water system is off in your body. And it, having good, healthy kidneys and good, healthy uh, urinary tract, you're able to make changes quickly and to make them vibrantly without a lot of pressure or a lot of worry. <laughs> and so now uh, on the other elements, if you don't have enough wind in your body, then you are boring and you're not creative. And so <laughs> y y you have to have wind uh, in order to be creative, in order to come up with new ideas. But if you have too much wind, then you're psychotic, you're crazy. You can't handle too many ideas too fast. And so the wind is the creativity. Now the earth element is the ability to be stable, to keep your feet on the ground, and to complete projects that you begin. And that's a very, very important aspect too, that some people get started and they start something else and they start something. Now that's a lack of earth. Now if you don't have enough fire in your body, that means that you, you're too bland, you don't get excited about anything, you don't get angry about anything, and you don't impose your will on anything or you don't keep driving to get things done so those if those elements are all balanced out probably the most important one is the water because that it allows you to change and to move quickly and to adapt to the circumstances so that's what we use the lemongrass for we drink a, a few glasses every single day to ma maintain that ability to adapt to make changes and to make decisions quickly now this is a, a plant that we use to increase the immunity. Now when I, was, uh, when I was training in shamanism, I drank this twice a day to penetrate my entire system. So it gives you the ability to uh, be under stress with sick people and crazy people without letting it enter into you because it gives you uh, an arcana. It gives you a protective pyramid over you. So anything negative, whether it be spiritual or physical, bounces off and goes back to the center. And so uh, that's very important for the protection of any sort of a healer or anybody who's involved with people because you have to have that protection and you also have to have the ability to go from the emotional chakra into the crown chakra so that you can step out of the sentimental, the worrisome uh, indulgence and go up to the solutions. And the solutions are very important and so you step back away from the things that you always worry about but that actually do you no good at all to worry about them. And you go up into the crown chakra, the third eye, where you see the solutions. And then you put things in their place and you're liberated. Now that in itself is an incredibly strong protection because it helps you to step up a notch and look at things from above, to adapt to faster, higher frequency and to be able to solve problems quickly and to solve other people's problems quickly too without getting indulgent and wasting a lot of energy on it. So yeah, this is a very beautiful plant and, uh, and it has a purple flower as a celebration telling people where it's going because the power is in the root. The power is in the root. That's what we use as the root. But the advertising or the presence or the elegance is from the flower. And what does the flower say? That it starts in the ground and it goes all the way up to heaven. In other words, it, the, the violet color is always a celebration of the royalty, of the crown chakra, of the enlightened one. And so priests will, will wear purple robes because it's, 
it's saying that they've made it to the top and they're enlightened. Okay, and so this plant also says the same thing with its flower. And so it's very delicate, very feminine, and at the same time, it's extremely masculine because its power comes from the root right from the ground. And so it's a very beautiful combination of all the elements that you need to heal correctly and to heal in a dynamic, fast pace. Now, these are, these are all plants that we use, but this is one of my favorites here. I have this house plant. Uh, this is a house plant and also in my garden outside my house. It's called Cat's Eye or Ojo de Gato, and what that means is that it, it helps you to see in the dark. So if you make a tea out of this and you wash your, your face with it, it will dilate your pupils, and the Indians used to use it as uh, a way to take excursions at night for hunting or for, uh, you know, war parties or whatever they needed it for. But this has an enormous amount of power, and the way that you can see that it has enormous power is because of the personality. It has... Every leaf has a personality. It's a very deep, powerful one. They look like um, they, they look like emblems that would be hanging over a house to say, "This is our family." You know? And so everyone is different. They have a lot of difference. Like this one is very different from this one. So they have got that one clone or one pattern. They have many patterns. And so take a look at that one. So you can see how ornate those are. Now, it has a lot of personality. In other words, it's advertising itself, it's promoting itself, it's drawing attention to itself, and it insists on a lot of individuality and a lot of uh, celebration of what it is, because that's not like any other leaf. It's not like any other plant. It insists on being itself 100%. And that's where power really comes from, for that individual capacity to show your own colors, to not to be cloned down to a basic common denominator. It's extremely important to remember that. Now we have these plants. This plant right here is called Santa Maria. It is a very beautiful, powerful plant. And it's used for taking toxins out of the body topically. So if you have a wasp bite or you have a blood infection that gives you a swelling on your arm, what you do is you take this plant and you chop it up real nice. And then you take another, another leaf like this and put it in there. And then you put that directly on the affected part, and you put a band around it and hold it in place. And then when you took it off six hours later, it would be dark because it would have pulled all the toxins out. And then you put two or three more applications, and you pull it right out. And you save the body the problem of having to cleanse through the liver and through the kidneys. You take a lot of pressure off the organs by using external medicine like this. And this is incredibly effective. I use it all the time. Now this is another useful plant. This one is called uh, chucha de baca, which simply means that it looks like a cow's udder. And so when you slice it down the middle, inside it has a very toxic paste that will kill athlete's foot in any sort of external fungus. So you put it on the external fungus and it will dry it up and make it disappear. And now this plant, you don't see where it grows, but the leaves have spines on them, which would give the herbalist the information that it's a plant not to be ingested. You have to be careful with it, you know, because if you pop this in your mouth, you'll burn a hole in your stomach. But it's very useful when it's used externally. It'll kill fungus. But if you use it internally, it would be to recover from it would be not something that you would so if an herbalist sees those spines they generally move gently and, and cautiously and they'll put it on first now this one you can see on the inside that white meat is what will kill the fungus and Does so it also kill or warts, warts? warts? Or yeah. yes it will also kill warts or it will burn them up and yeah. reduce them you know and we have burn a few levels off from it and so, uh, here. So how would you propagate that, that, the, the one you just showed us? You take the seeds and you plant them in the ground and then they'd, they'd sprout up another plant. Because they have seeds that are underneath the leaves and that, that are on the pods that will, that when they get mature, they'll drop to the ground. Okay. And then, then they'll, they'll propagate new plants. Now, if you were going to do it seriously, like a horticulturalist, of course, you put them in the ground and you, you, you fertilize them and you make sure that, that they're sprouting quickly. 
Or you'd have, you know, 20 seeds and you'd wait and take the strong ones that, that sprout quickly and you plant them. Now this is a plant that we use uh, frequently. This, this is called caguena. Oh no, this is called achote actually. And now the achote is used for reducing the swelling and the inflammation of the urinary tract and also of the prostate gland. So a lot of men have saved themselves from having prostate surgery by drinking teas of achote. Now what would you do is you would take 60 of these leaves, you'd uh, steam them, just uh, simmering them basically, and you make a dark tea, dark green tea, and drink about uh, four or five glasses a day, and it would reduce the prostate. It would reduce the prostate swelling down to uh, a level where it can be used where, where the whole urinary tract will function again. Now this also has a signal to the herbalist, which is this seed pod, which looks a little bit like a prostate gland. It's basically in the same shape. And so that's a hint that comes from the natural world to the practitioner. And this also has a, another use, which is being used very frequently now, as a dye, because this is a very strong red dye in the seeds. This is what makes the plant grow. And this is extremely strong red dye. And people use it now to dye their hair and to dye cloth and to do any number of other things. I would imagine that the Indians used to use it before to paint their faces, you know, as uh, ornamentation. And so that would be uh, something, Sandra, maybe you used to, I mean, it, this would be like you could tattoo. <laughs> and so uh, all these plants have a lot of personality. They have a lot of power. And they have a lot of utility when you know how to use them right and when you know how to use them combining them with other plants and with nutrition and so uh, they all have a lot of power a lot of personality and they all open up new doors in our energy system which is what we use them for to amplify our experience and to improve the quality of our lives this one right here is called noni, and you've probably heard of it because they sell it in most uh, health food stores. And it's a blood cleanser and a lymph cleanser. And so this will, they, they use this as a preventative of toxic blood diseases, okay? And also as a treatment for them. And so I'm going to, uh, this is noni. This is noni, and so you're welcome to try a little bit. It tastes a little bit like blue cheese dressing, and uh, it's good. <laughs> Actually, that's a that's a pretty a pretty good bottle. It's a pretty good bottle for you. Come on, come on, come on. It's like rocora cheese. Yeah, it has it has a little bit of that rocora quality. It's very active. Yeah, it's Now you can therapeutically drink about uh, a half a bottle a day. You know, and it will cleanse your blood really nicely. And so, uh, and it will be, become a preventative for any skin diseases, and it will fortify your eyesight, you know. It will increase, it'll increase the circulation in your body. So it has a number of very, very practical functions, you know, and people drink it all over the place. In all over the, the Occidental world, but you will go into a health food store and you won't find this taste, you'll find it mixed with fruit juice and honey mm -hmm. and all kinds of things to make it recreational. Yeah. This, however, is entirely medicinal. Mm -hmm. This will have a medicinal impact on your body immediately. <laughs> you like you know, that? It's really good. Uh, wow, you like that, huh? You like the, the label on it, too, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> mm. You'll pass for now? Okay, well. Anyhow, it's really good for you. Remember that. And so this is called caguena. Now this this plant, cooked as a tea, will reduce um, swelling and it will re reduce fever internally. And externally, it, it will grow hair. So if you soak this overnight, you can use it as a cream rinse in the morning, and it will help your hair to fortify and to grow. So a lot of people use it for that. It's I took that popular. home last year. Did you? I have a plant like this in my garden. Mm. Wow, good for you. So it grows well in the Caribbean. Yeah. Good. It's 
good to know. Well, it grows really well here, and I have a bunch of it growing outside my house, too, in, in my herb garden. But the thing is, these plants have a lot of personality. They have a lot to give us to open up our energy field and to allow us to live better, stronger, more fascinating lives. And when your body is balanced and strong, it's able to make changes and it's able to go into other states of mind. For instance, the dream state. And the dream state is very important because that's the time when we go into our subconscious mind, our astral plane, and we're able to access information from the mythological world, from the fantasy world, from our past, from our future. And to step into the creative part of our bodies and our, and our energy fields. And that's why we use ayahuasca, because it creates a cushion between the material world and the dream world. And that's a very creative band to be living in, because that's where you're making all kinds of connections that you will find in the best poets and the best movie makers and the best playwrights and the best painters. They have access to the dream line, but the dream line also has one foot on the ground and one foot up above. Now that's what we do when we go into ayahuasca trance. And that's why the ayahuasca is basically a creative stepping stone into the most creative parts of our mind that we very frequently have never met before. In other words, that's why when people go there into the into the, the altered state of the ayahuasca, they see it as completely foreign. It's something that's so strange that they would never imagine it's coming from inside of them or from, from their history or from their energy field. But it is. You're going directly into a creative part of you that's frightening. It's very frightening because it's making connections very quickly. Now, as soon as you make a peace with that, then you can live there. It's what the Indians call the land of the gods. And so when I first training, I take ayahuasca for 50, 60, 70 times, and I say, this ayahuasca is tearing me apart. Can't you lower my dosage? My teacher says, no, we can't. And I'll tell you why, because you, you want to heal. So if you're going to heal, you're going to have to go through the intensity of this in the dark direction, and then the pendulum's going to swing back and it's going to go the other way, and you're going to feel at home in the field of the Lord. You're going to feel at home in the land of the gods. But first you have to get used to it. It's an anarchistic wild place where everything is born, everything is creative, and where everything also eventually dies. And so you have access to that realm. You have access to the area that the best artists and writers have access to. And so that's why we use ayahuasca, is to make us more creative, not only in our creations and our artwork, but also make us more creative in the solutions we come up with for our personal situations. Relationships, jobs, decisions on what clothes we're going to wear, where we're going to take our vacations, and what we're going to do. The ayahuasca opens up that dimension of second sight, that you get at that membrane right between your dream and your waking state. Extremely creative time. You wake up and you don't remember exactly where you went to sleep and all kinds of images are coming and going through your mind. And you enjoy that for a while and then you say, time for coffee, you gotta get down and get your fire the car up and go. To now, if you live in that place for long enough, you're gonna be able to create a lot of things come up with a lot of innovative solutions that you've never imagined before because you're at peace and you're at home there. And so that's what I would like you to take home with you after you've been through your ayahuasca sessions and you've been through the influence of hearing and listening and experiencing the ayahuasca and the shamanic medicine on a very personal, powerful basis because that's going to open up fountains of creativity inside of you that you really, really need in order to lead a superlative, incredible life that you aspire to. Because otherwise you're going to get cloned down to the basic common denominator and you are not going to establish your creativity, your individuality, and the joy and the power that really you're entitled to. And the, the way that we do that is 
precise about going into that area between dream and waking and making a peace between them so that we can bring that creativity down to earth and we can express it in a way that it's very much individualized. It's not derived from anybody else because it comes directly from us. You're not going to learn how to do that by reading books and trying to copy somebody else's style. You have to have your own style. And it's the same thing in painting or in relationships or in anything that you aspire to do that's out of the ordinary. It has to come from that area inside yourself. Now, we're going in there tonight in our ayahuasca session, and you're going to feel the intensity and the power and realize that the ayahuasca is going into you as a key to open that up for you. The power comes from inside you. But the ayahuasca is a God-given key, a sacrament put here on the planet to help us open up the best aspects of our personalities and of our creativity and for giving us the power to solve problems quickly and effectively and in a very useful, applicable way. And so that is what I wish for all of you while you're here. So thanks so much for making the effort to come because it's going to be worth your while and I'm going to make sure that you get as much done as you possibly can while you're here. Okay, well here we have an enormous amount of ayahuasca. This was planted about four years ago and since then it's grown up. There's a tower of ayahuasca right here, there's a tower of ayahuasca here, there's one here, and there's one here that just fell over because it was too heavy to be supported. And so the tree it was climbing broke and it came down. And so these are extremely prolific. In other words, they grow extremely fast. Now this is called ayahuasca, which means the vine of death, but for me it's a vine of life. It's a vine of creativity and it allows you to see beyond your normal limitations in this life to what you're going to experience when you pass on. Now the active ingredient is a DMT, which is released by the chacruna and the ayahuasca combined. And so this is an enzyme inhibitor that allows the stomach to pass the DMT into the bloodstream for a short time and allow you to experience the altered state brought on by the DMT. Now you will all experience that state when you die because you have a bunch of it in your, in your glands that will be released to allow your body to leave your spirit and for your spirit to go and to leave your body down here. That's what the DMT is for. So you're already carrying around a vial of it, but you will not be able to assimilate it into your blood because your body's very intelligent computer and it only releases it when you're actually dying. But we have an alchemical dance basically that we do to allow us three or four hours in that, in that dimension. Because this turns down the, the sensor inside the stomach that usually ostracizes the DMT and it allows the DMT to slip into the blood and give you a three to four hour or even a six hour experience that will be extremely intense and it will be, and you'll very often have visions of that you're leaving your body and so on and so forth. And then it will snap back and you'll go back to your same body and mind and uh, your, your organs will have been adjusted, your blood will have been cleansed and your mind and your heart will have been balanced into a brand new paradigm that's much healthier, much stronger and much more tuned to creativity, to solutions and to health. And that's why we use it and it's beautiful. Now we have 1600 chacruna bushes up in the mountains up here, up, up on the shady hillside. Now, yeah, this one is growing pretty well because recently it's been raining a lot and it's been very damp, but it's got a little too much sun here right now. And uh, usually it, it grows better with less sun. But you take these two elements and you boil them together for 10, 12 hours and they become the combination called ayahuasca that we drink and that we'll be drinking tonight. It's incredibly powerful and it's incredibly creative. It is basically an alchemical process that you see in the day and the night, in the wind and in the water and in the storms and the calm. And you see it through all of nature and through all relationships. It's a combination of creativity. 
And so that's what we drink, creativity. We drink a valve into a fountain of creativity that opens our lives, opens our capacity, and it gives us a brand new lease on our own genius. And that's what I wish for all of you while you're here.